Good morning, uh, Seattle. Hi, Bill. Hi, Kate. Good morning, TCT Boston. How are you, Margaret, and the panel? We're excited to see you here from Good. the University I'm of Washington. Gonna, I'm going to try to forget seeing you dancing in the calf lab, but <laughs> why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself, introduce your team, and uh, introduce the case, and Margaret will introduce the panel after you guys. Go ahead. That sounds great. Well, I'm, obviously, I have Kate Carney here who needs really no introduction anymore. She's the future of CTO PCI and high-risk PCI in the United States, and I'm blessed to have her as my partner. She's going to be front scrubbing. I've got Chol, one of our outstanding techs, Jasleen Tijuana, who is one of our current high-risk PCI fellows. Uh, anybody looking for an outstanding future of our profession, I highly recommend Jasleen. I've got Gina, Michaela, and Chris, our great nurses, monitoring and managing things. Um, and we're here to uh, show a nice, hopefully fairly straightforward uh, circumflex CTL PCI. Uh -oh. With that, I'll have Jasleen introduce, huh? yep, we'll have Jasleen introduce <laughs> the case, um, and then we can meet the panel and talk about strategy. All right, we all ears. We are looking forward to the case. Great, thank you. Next slide. So this is a 70-year-old gentleman. He's got a history of coronary artery disease with prior PCI of the RCA. In 2017, he had onset of angina in the spring of this year, for which he underwent a nuclear medicine stress test that found infralateral wall ischemia. Subsequent angiography showed a left circumflex CTO. Um, he's had up titration of antianginals to maximally tolerated antianginals, but continues to have CCS2 angina. So given that, he had actually a, an attempt at left circumflex CTO PCI at an outside hospital with anagrade wire escalation, which was unsuccessful but uncomplicated, and he presents here for a second attempt. Next slide. And these are his angiograms. On the left, we can see that he doesn't really have any significant collaterals off the RCA. He has a short segment circumflex CTO with some proximal cap ambiguity, given that there's that little branch that comes off right at the proximal cap. He's got two ipsilateral AV groove collaterals, as well as some potential collateral either off the diagonal or the apical LAD that we'll just reassess a little bit later today. So next slide. We, we lost a our, slide in here. Can you just, it, just oh. a second, can we get the slides back or this is it, all the slides? It's, well, that's, all, that's all we need. We can just go to the live case and get going. Yeah, let's go to the live case and uh, and uh, uh, we're gonna tell us what you wanna tell us and we're gonna throw it to the audience actually and the panel. All right, so Kate, do you wanna talk about your approach here? Yeah, so here's our setup shot. I mean, I think what you didn't see is the Folks who are working on this previously are getting stuck in that side branch that comes off right near the proximal cap. Um, with a stiff penetrative and tapered wire, they were able to get some purchase, but nothing was really traveling. And they were some French radial at the time. Seems like they ran into some issues just penetrating the proximal cap and also getting a little bit lost. It might be more ambiguous than we first thought. Um, so all together, we can see, obviously, the dominant collateral off the AV groove has a few turns that we're not super excited about, but might be doable. Um, and then it's a short enough segment here, and I think you know we're not battling too much ambiguity, so I think this would be a case where if we find ourselves subintimal in that same trajectory, we actually were considering parallel wiring. Um, if we're subintimal there, you know, Stingray, and then I think really the decision tree, if that's not successful, is if it's worth doing that epicardial or if we should starve. That's, a, that's an excellent uh, presentation. Thank you, Kate. And. Um, so I will uh, let Margaret introduce, uh, introduce the panel really fast, and uh, we want to see w at what stage you are. Go ahead, Margaret. Hi, Kate and Bill. Uh, nice to see you guys. So uh, on the panel today with me and Cal, we've got Nicola Ryan from the UK. We've got Dimitri Karpaliotis, who's going to be our chat moderator. We've got uh, Mike Wyman. We've got Shiguru Seto, and we've got Gerald Werner. And at the end, we've got Canvas Mashiaki. So maybe what we'll do is, as you guys start working, we'll get some opinion, Cal, from the panel about how they would approach the case. Yes, absolutely. We're going to start uh, from, actually, uh, Nicola. How would you approach this case uh, while our partners there and colleagues start working? Yeah, so I think um, as the uh, operators have said, um, it's a fairly short CTO. I think I'd take a similar approach, a brief attempt at an anti-grade wiring. Um, the images today look a lot clearer than the brief images that we saw on the um, initial uh, PowerPoint. 
I think short attempt at antiquated wiring. If I went sub, sub intimal, take down a stingray and attempt to re enter. Okay, so uh, uh, Dimitri, which wire? Obviously, we're talking about anti grade wire escalation. Which wire would you start with? XTA, Fielder FC, uh, other polymer jacketed wire, or non polymer jacketed wire penetration wire? Uh, I think if I heard correctly, they had trouble penetrating the proximal cap, and that was the mode of failure uh, last time. I don't know what wire they used. It would be interesting to figure it out. I would probably start with the Mongo here and see if I can make any progress into the cap, and then if that doesn't work, uh, I would uh, switch to a Gaia. Ma Margaret, you want to make a comment? Yes, yeah, so um, I think there's kind of two, two approaches here. One is if you're a kind of person that's going to commit to a real anti-grade wire strategy. This is a case in which some people might elect to use the Gaia family or similar type of steerable wire, whereas if you're thinking, I'm going to have a careful kind of controlled attempt to wire this and then accept this intimal space and re-enter, you're maybe more inclined to go with a polymer jacket like a Gladius. Yep. Dr. Sato, uh, so this is, uh, this is, you go with a like what the choice is, let's say we want to penetrate the proximal cap, as uh, Dimitri said, will you go with a Gaia uh, Confianza Pro 12 or a Stato wire? Which was, what will you be first choice? Okay, uh, my first wire for this region is uh, Gaia. Gaia. Second. Gaia second. Yes. All right, uh, Mike, so you are prepping for, for possible failure and uh, let's say they went subintimal. We know what's going to happen here. They're going to get it in five minutes. But let's can I, they went subintimal. So where do you set up for re-entry? Which branch out of those three branches? AV groove, like pistolata branch, and a small OM. Where do you set up for re-entry in those? Well, I, I think that brings up another question in terms of preparation here and whether whether you want to start off using a uh, guideline or guide extension device uh, if you think that uh, integrated section reentry is going to be a relatively um, high likelihood of, um, of an option for success so so I think you, you know you always have to think about whether you're going to start off with uh, guide extension in these cases I pretty much routinely do if I think ADR is uh, going to be useful. Uh, and then in terms of wire, I routinely uh, start off with a Gladius Mongo or, or regular Gladius wire uh, in pretty much all these kind of integrated cases. Uh, the reentry spot, I think, is going to be in that AV groove portion of the vessel before the, the major branch distally. Um, looks like a pretty yeah. well-preserved re-entry spot without that much calcium. So the audience, like the summary is like you have to come at this lesion, however it's simple it looks in the service, you have to be prepared. So Mike will be actually ready for the, the re-entry technique even when he probably knows going to get it anti-grade, but that's why you start with a trap liner or a guidezilla up front to basically protect the subintimal space if you end up in a subintimal space from hematoma. Uh, so Gerald, let me ask you this. So this is a previous failure in one of our colleagues and, and you are one of the major centers and you get a lot of previous failures. How do you approach those different than de novo CTO lesion? Well, um, obviously it looks, if I, I took the image from the PowerPoint correctly, that after the initial attempt, the shape of the CTO has already changed, so they managed to create an entry, and now it's just a 10, 15 millimeter occlusion. Yes. So uh, the information is helpful, what wire was used. If uh, you use now a non-steerable wire, you are kind of prone to get subintimal most times. So I would choose definitely a Gaia type here. And uh, one or two or three? One, two, or three? I think two is okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, escalate quickly, and that's, uh, in my view, uh, in this short distance, an easy case for a mm. parallel wiring to for fail and to save the anatomy with a second branch that is going. So I, I, I kind of figure out you can answer that question, but my question was, do you prepare differently for a failure case versus a case you're starting from the get-go? Yeah. If I get go, my first choice is an XT. 
Okay. So, I, I so you approach it differently, obviously. Yeah. And so it's I very important to study the previous angiogram and understand the failure mode for this um, campus. Well, um, tell me which, like, would you go primary? You are the retrograde yeah. king. Yeah. Would you go primary retrograde in this? I don't know. So, um, first of all, what I would different is I would go with seven French radial. So that that's the first. I don't need eight French for this case here. Uh, second, it's a symptomatic indication. What I'm seeing are a bifurcation at the distal cap, right? There are uh, two equal, uh, equal postal lateral branches. So therefore, for me, all this, I mean, uh, going around and, and dissecting, it's, it's, it's not a way to do that case because you will lose the postal lateral branch. So if anti-grade vascalation works, I will use a dual lumen microcardita, we'll, we'll do a second wire and we'll try to reconstruct the bifurcation. If not, the threshold for going retrograde for me personally is like zero in this case because with SUO and, uh, and, and the new microcatheters, uh, nothing will happen to this collateral, right? That's awesome. I actually, I actually have a lower threshold starting retrograde. I agree with you, but I would not. I will basically don't care about the small side branch. I will basically take the bigger branch and ADR. So I, I just want to for the audience, and this is all built on. We have kind of basically muscle memory. You look at it. This is JCTO score two, basically. There is a calcium and nothing else less than 20 millimeter and a previous attempt. So this is JCTO score is low and a progress CTO score is uh, basically one because it's a CERC, I think. So um, Kate, do you want to tell us um, how you're getting on, what your equipment is and, and how you're finding it? Yeah, so she's got a, a 135 microcatheter anagrade. We can get into the nuances of them, but we have a 135 sort of large microcatheter anagrade. We tried jacket wires, it didn't work. The previous case failed with a stiff penetrative wire. We're going back to a stiff penetrative wire. Again, the whole issue here is the proximal cap. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's pretty what we're, we're eh? Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it's interesting listening to the discussion, right? Because, yeah. It's not you know, an easy CTU. <laughs> well, it, it may or may not be. The reality is it depends, again, on everybody's personal narratives, what they've done in the past and what they're good at. And, you know, despite, you know, Saito Sensei and Werner Sensei, or Werner and myself, you know, we're the old guys here. We've been around a long time. We still have a lot of people who don't know how to parallel wire. We still have a lot of people who don't know how to go retrograde. We still have a lot of people. Um, and so I just think that despite this, we really, you know, we've tra trained a lot of people, but we also still have a long way to go to get our colleagues to do a procedure sort of. And I think the, the, the anatomically, the thing uh, that makes us think this is simple is it's short. Yeah. Yeah. But the possible cap yeah. is blunt with a little bit of ambiguity. There's angulation, you're in the more distal aspect of the circumflex, and there's a side branch of the distal cap, So, and there's probably yep. a little bit of calcium. So although we intuitively look at it and think it looks simple, if you really stop and think about the case, and it's got epicardial collateral, it's actually not that simple. Keep driving right there. But I, I, I want to point out that how how sure, can I deliberate every movement Kate is performing in that in that case, she's not really kind of moving the wire back and forth. She not, has not exchanged so many wires, and the question now at this stage, who will put uh, a microcatheter uh, or dual lumen microcatheter and start trying to kind of get into the other vessel? Uh, a panel, would you do dual lumen microcatheter? Who, uh, Gerald? Well, um, first of all, I think, uh, I, I don't know which wire she uses, uh, wasn't mentioned, but we it's saw- It's a Hornet 14, Gerald, if you'd like to go by name. We could nice, uh, pull back so it's the a stiff penetrative wire. wire. And, and it looks, yeah. we need a second plane, like she yep. penetrated the distal cap. So that was a nice, if it's a Gaia, it would be the typical Gaia movement, but <laughs> yeah, it happens with other wires. So, so wire could you explain it? to me the typical Gaia movement? I don't, you know, I, I used about 100 before I gave up on it, Gerald. So trying to get the audience to understand what you're saying, how would you explain what the typical Gaia movement of the wire properly is? So, so we saw the wire turning uh, to the right. So the wire was pulled back and the tip, if, is it a Gaia? Don't, I don't want to on the on the ice ring. No. <laughs> is it a guy? Yeah. No, 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 it's a but I, 14. Oh, well, no, I mean, so if you can't, so if it has, it has a specific movement, can't control. you? 
Yeah? Okay. So yeah. it has tip control. So you pull it back and you she turned it to the left and made the, the change in the pathing uh, that we saw was the deviation from the original uh, path. And that happens with any wire that has this small tip. Yeah. So, so the Hornet 14 for the audience is a 14 gram 0 0.08 and a straight tip wire. It's a penetration wire. You use it to puncture proximal caps. And the Gaia wires are different kind of wires. They are actually with Act 1 design. And what you need to know that they actually tend to bend in certain direction in one direction when you push against it. So that, that's what, what that's kind of major difference. A pre-shaped and certain design versus the Hornet 14 is kind of made for penetration. It has actually very good control. I think the Gaia has better control. Uh, Compass. Okay. Um, regarding your primary question, how should you approach a private failure, right? In this case, Normally, the reason why they are failing is because a uh, soft polymeric wire just slept into already the extra plug space. So the way to where she's now is again in this space where she's in failure mode. So normally in these cases, what you try is, or what I personally try, is to go back to the cap and try to find a point of resistance to get an intra plug position there. So I think uh, this would be the way uh, to, 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 to attempt the case, go back to the proximal cap, try to find resistance point there and maybe then do a step down even. So wh why not you are in a suboptimal space somewhere around the, the CTO and you, they basically the difficulty is penetrating the distal cap. Why not put a, like this is just a question, why not put a, 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 a micro catheter like uh, a dual lumen or triple lumen micro catheter and try to Let's find a different a wire to go yep. or uh, use a parallel wire technique. I, I do Just the same there. thing you did. But uh, this is my question in my lab. I always ask myself, should I do that or just go back to the proxima cap? The, the, the chance to be successful with parallel wiring depends also on the first wire. So if you have a great wire position of the first wire, meaning that in two coaxial fuse, you're just a little bit behind, right? But you are aligned with the vessel, not like here somewhere, uh, then you have a greater chance for parallel wire. But here at this point, I, I would not uh, change the parallel wire. You have to have a better wire position from the first wire. Okay, so you don't think that the current wire position, and I got to tell you that we we easily could be fooled, right, Margaret? Yeah, yeah, especially in this area and the circumflex. Especially in the circumflex. And it, it's yeah. notoriously a difficult area to wire and to re-enter. And the other thing I'd like to point out and ask uh, the guys to comment on is obviously because we have no contralateral collaterals, we're having to inject contrast in the left system. But what you'll yeah. notice is Kate is constantly plugging then flow to that track with the microcatheter so she's not expanding the track with contrast. So that's really it's important. Why we didn't go with, it's why we didn't go with trap liner because the collateral is so close it'd be hard to actually be able to visualize and still minimize hematoma. We actually d debated taking a, a fine cross and doing tip so injections. Yeah. Right All right. So we de-escalated from our penetrative wire and went to a, a jacket wire just to make sure we had resistance and that we were Wh not which outside. Wire Bill? Which wire, Bill? Well, yeah. Does, Does it matter? No, not much because there is one gram I mean, or three grams it's, or four it's, grams. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a polymer jacketed stiff wire designed to fold over. Okay. Um, you know, so what we've done now, Kate's got a little bit more resistance on this. We're going to take a picture. Okay. That's, you got resistance there? So the okay, reason they are able to take a picture, they have not dissected okay, yet. So we're next there time. is not big subentimal right. space, so and pictures does not propagate that dissection. So, so you remember, if you are in subentimal space, we should stop injecting. But Margaret alluded that you put a microcatheter in a collateral donor, uh, or okay, you still can inject because you have not so dissected okay. yet. The, yeah, the, so the other we're going to just so can we we're just while well, you guys go back and argue. Um, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go put a dual lumen catheter in. We're going to get a Gaia 3 next, and we'll do old school parallel wire. We don't get a lot of cases that are this short and this obvious. And we're on the wrong, I'm not sure we're on the best side to do Stingray yet. Um, so we're going to just to be open to that there are a lot of different ways that this could be done, because we could go right to Stingray here and do it. We could go do retrograde right here. There are lots of options to do this. And if you notice for the audience, all of the panel is going to what their, their preference is. 
And the reality is none of us are right and none of us are wrong. It's just, it's what you're comfortable with and what you decide to do. For me, I think the most important thing is to be so good at all of the different techniques. You don't have a bias one way or the other. You just have the ability to execute. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take out our microcatheter. We're going to put a dual of a microcatheter in. We're going to go Gaia 3 next. And we're going to try to wire this thing and see if we get it. If not, we will probably go back to a jacket of wire, get it down past the proximal cap, and then we'll move to Stingray. And if that doesn't work, then you guys can have a debate, which is safer, an epicardial collateral or star, and not in the hands of the, the 10 world's experts that we're lucky to have coaching us, but in the majority of people that are actually going to be able to see and take on these cases. Does that sound reasonable? May, may I ask uh, to use actually a little bit of the lateral plane? I think I would change the, uh, the plane because this doesn't really tell you how far away you are from the distal cap. She, she wants us to go more ARIO, uh, more ARIO, Gerald? Or more LAO? More LAO. Do you want okay, an orthogonal we'll, we'll, view? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, do you want, do, you don't want, you, that's an LAO cranial. You want an LAO caudal. Okay. Yeah, well, what I would say, first of all, I agree with okay. Gerald that uh, an LAO caudal would be uh, helpful because the cirques are so three dimensional that you really can't uh, uh, tell for sure. Thanks, uh, and the fact that the microcatheter was advanced into the proximal cap slightly kind of protects you from extending the hematoma. So that's why they were able to inject because they had already plugged the entry point into, into, into the so dissection. That's you, very so you important mean, you mean Dimitri, that, that they should already do a super selective injection? I mean, they have eight French guides, uh, therefore they could prevent that hematoma, right? What, yeah, what, but what a super selective it, it, injection, the epicardial, right, with microcatheter? But, but it's already plugged. They're not gonna, there's not space around the microcatheter to extend the hematoma, I think. So they, but they, but they, Cam, the Camus, that is a reasonable thing to think about. Again, I, as I want the audience to get you have 10 world experts with zero consensus on what to do. And I no. think it's really important that that's one of the challenges is we don't have consensus because so much of it is based on what we've historically done or the relationship with devices or our willingness to change. And so but it's really important for the audience. You're gonna have to figure out what you want to do and what you're capable of doing in your situation. So, so this is, I, I, don't, I don't agree with Bill. We have consensus of a lot of things. We have consensus of using collaterals, uh, bilateral uh, guide catheters when you need them. We have consensus of wire escalation. The only thing there is no nuances between the, the different operators. And, and this has basically become intricate debate, but I'm sure like all of us here are able to kind of do all these techniques, but which one you start with? So what's your second your wire? Guy. Right? That's the a guy, guy of three next. Yeah, and we don't do a lot of it, so we're looking. We're happy to have him by I fear that the microcatheter is a little bit too deep, and, uh, okay. and the deviation from the true lo uh, true course uh, is a little bit more proximal. Okay, so she, Kate's going to back up here a little bit. Yeah. This is a. So Gerald, we're, we're going to back uh, up. This is. Yeah, that's better, I think. Yeah, you could go, we could have done seven French rail, we talked about it, we, you can do eight French. Mm. All that is is access and mm. personal preference. As long as you know how to do both with equal safety, which means for groins, you have to do microscope, you have to do micropuncture, okay. fluoroscopic, uh, ultrasound guided techniques. If you don't, then you're gonna have risks. So you may have to go a little forward, a little back now. How would you, so do, how would you do ultrasound guided technique? Like where are we gonna put the ultrasound? No, I meant in the You're leg. Access, groin access. access. Oh, okay. Mm. I yeah, think this would be very challenging to do ultrasound guided access in the yeah. corner. You are not planning to do IVAS guided? Because no, we, were not, we no? were not planning to do IVAS mm. guided anything. Mm. So I don't think that's any different. So what, what Kate's trying to do here is she's trying to come back and pick up resistance and not follow the other wire that's got no resistance in the subintimal track. So she's coming back and trying to pick up the resistance of the occlusive plaque. So this movement of the wire, Margaret, do you agree it could be in a true lumen or outside? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. It's outside. Be outside. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. But you can take the first wire now because it looks like it's uh, really aligning very well with the okay. distal cap. So you can reuse the first wire to get there. And? 
What? what do you do? If you take the first wire, you have to take the Gaia out of there and put a different wire? No, you leave the Gaia. You oh, know you, you need to just be half a millimeter to the right of the first wire. You try to get it. You know, I, if I, the first wire uh, is controllable Alex, enough. Uh, I tried that in a stint. I was outside the stint and I tried it and it worked like magic. But I had a, like a really looks, big target, which is the stent. Looks good. Uh, I think that might be true lumen. We need to see it in two orthogonal oh, views, guys, before. So for the audience, no. if you see it this way, you want to make sure if you suspect you are in true lumen, you want to see it in different, or you want the wire movement to tell you that you are in a true lumen. Yeah. This looks like subentimal. Yeah. 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 That's not true. Don't, don't, don't move too much. So now you have to make a decision because well, we'll you're now it. potentially extending your space. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to transition here. Take that this one? Yeah. 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 There. And you've got a relatively short target before that next bifurcation to preserve, yeah? Yeah, I think the smaller branch we can probably bail out. Okay, let's go our, uh, let's sure go our that we're good there, sure. yeah. So we've had enough other stuff. So, so I want you to look, the audience, look at the, how the wire and the artery move in different phases. Sure, Did you see that? Yeah, it's just waving if too If you don't want to do something. two injections, you, you can tell by that contrast. that you're in two different places. We're not even in the right yeah. place. Okay. So I think we, I think so we start all over that, and go to Stingray. That yeah. For we'll the audience, that's that. a very it good example work. of okay. how it you can use that out. movement in phases to tell you what the wire is, where the wire is. And that last so view, actually, you can kind of see where the target is, can't you, in that last picture you just took to there, Bill? Yeah. Um, so Kate, Kate and Bill, how concerned are yeah. you about preserving that first branch? Zero. You know, not we, a lot. We I was going to start that up. Start yeah. later, so. We would start it to, to save it. I'm not that concerned about it. So we're going to we're going to try and see if we get something to get more reliably in the submittable space and do Stingray. If that doesn't right. work, then we can have a discussion about star versus yeah, retrograde. Um, the other problem so I will tell you that my issue with anti wire right now is we're you know you have to take so many contrast pictures because yeah. you have to be able to prove you can't follow with the microcatheter otherwise. Again, that's not a it just it's a consequence of your choice, not a right so, or wrong. So just just for the audience, when you want to switch to integrate dissection reentry, you fine. should start from an area that actually 100% are learning what we wanted them to learn. inside the adventitia. So if you microcatheter past it. So Margaret, can you go for the audience over the step? Let's say they're going to start ADR. What the star technique? How do you obtain that side of branch? You lose it. Okay, so one point just before that I would make as well is what the guys are demonstrating is a very common problem in this area in the arc where you're trying to do wire escalation and you think you're in the right plane and then you're dramatically not in the right plane when you change views. So be very careful about that. So when you're trying to wire this distal in the arc, move between multiple views because for, from a safety point of view because you can quite easily chase it with a mic catheter and that is going to be a big mistake you make a big hole in the vessel so just yeah. as the guys are doing check all the different views so if you're going to star so um, I think there's slight variation in different technique but essentially once you secure the main vessel if you want to come back and rescue the other vessel you can either try and do controlled re-entry but with a vessel that's small you're just going to try and get into the architecture of that side branch Follow yourself with a microcatheter and then try and get a polymer jacketed wire to fold and advance into that side branch. And hopefully, usually in a small branch like that, it'll pop back into the lumen at some point in the course. Yes. A lot of times when you're trying to uh, knuckle the wire into the RCA, for instance, it goes into the marginal branch. I actually keep that axis. I put a workhorse wire. Do you do that routinely? Margaret? No, that's interesting, though, but it's a smart idea. That means yeah, you can then rescue the marginal yeah. later. Yeah. So now with the jacket wire, we feel a more comfortable. So are you guys trying to form a knuckle and? We are. What we're seeing is we're probably in the, at the, the everything's bouncing off the distal. Well, let's see that one. We're bouncing off the. Uh, I'm not happy with yeah, that. That's on that other track. So, uh, Mike. Just keep pushing, pushing. So how how do you go about forming the knuckle push. and push it forward in this situation, like? Does the knuckle shape matters? Yep. How big is the knuckle matters? Or 
Yeah, yeah. <coughs> certainly the size, <coughs> the size of the knuckle matters uh, if you're contemplating ADR. Uh, so you want to want to keep the knuckle small, and Mongo's a, an excellent wire for um, keeping the knuckle size small and the subedmal space small. So I, and I think in these kind of situations, you have to move your microcatheter around. You might have to back it up. You have to find a tissue plane that you're comfortable with that the wire is subminimal and then get the knuckle going. So that's a feel, it's mostly a feel event. Uh, and yeah, that's a that's nice, a nice umbrella, umbrella handle. Nice umbrella. Uh, yeah, because um, we're getting a little resistance there and I don't know if we're in some other track. It looks like we were in a branch for a second, but it's just taking everything out. So and some, sometimes in this kind of situation, if you've already cre created planes that your wire then wants to follow, that you do want to track, then yep. maybe backing up, as Mike said, and get into the subintima further back sometimes is how, easier. How, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you get in the subintima further back? So either you, by scratching and using a kind of high penetration oh, force wire to kind of get into the to the tissue or by doing a base, so inflating a balloon causing a little bit of disruption to the subintima further back and simultaneously have a microcatheter behind your balloon with like a Confianza Pro 12 or a Hornet 14 and just trying to get into the, the subintima and switch after a millimetre or two you want to switch back to your polymer jacket to push as your knuckle. So either with a scratch or with a base. So uh, down, the, down the panel, what's your top knuckling wire? Wh which wire do you use to knuckle? Two top wires, Nicola? Um, probably a fielder gladius, depending on what, what the case is. D Dimitri, you use a gladius? You uh, I like still the uh, old uh, uh, XT. XT? And then gladius. Then gladius. Okay. Exactly the same as Dimitri, XT and gladius. Yeah. I actually used uh, okay, um, the uh, same it's thing, uh, XD, Gladius, and I, I so used the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Raider nowadays. Uh, Dr. Sado, d what's your top knuckling wire? Uh, usually I'm taking the field the FC. FC. Yeah. Mike? That looks good now. It depends on, on what the purpose yeah. is. And the, 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 the different, different characteristics of the different wires for knuckling. So if you want to maintain a small knuckle and small subminimal space, then Mongo is clearly the, 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 the preferred choice. I think if you sometimes can have difficulty getting in uh, with a, a Mongo into the subminimal space, and I think an XT uh, is preferential in that, that in. Uh, I think the uh, XT is preferential because of the tapered tip uh, for getting into the um, Subminimal space, uh, but it will form a larger knuckle. So I frequently go back and switch out for the uh, for the Mongo. So and basically, really the choice knuckle, based on pilot 200. Yeah. So the choice based on the size, the knuckle. What do you think, guys? Uh, uh, campus. Well, uh, it depends what I want to do with the knuckle, right? Perfect. So if I want to re-enter distally like a mini star or something, the XT is still a very good choice. Um, interestingly, also the MG has interesting, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's behaving interestingly also for the re-entry. But uh, just to, to go through an ambiguous, uh, uh, let's say, uh, vessel and with tortuosity, I think MG is a very good choice. Also retrograde, Sion Black can be very good, right? So, um, but for the re-entry, um, uh, the XT is still a good wire and MG as well. Gerald, when you knuckle, which wire do you use? Uh, if there is an XT on the table, I will use the XT first, mm -hmm. and uh, MG is the second choice. So what what Bill and Kate, I mean, uh, Bill, uh, Kate and Bill, are doing now? They are inter is this a Stingray balloon, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Stingray is coming down. We're just okay, getting good. Get so our catheter prepped, and, and Kate's just going to get it delivered. And, and and for the audience, as you can tell, hopefully nobody uses 300 centimeter wires anymore. All what you need is a trapping, and you can use a, either a dedicated trapping device or uh, you can use any balloon to trap with. So I know, Cal, that the, the guys are trapping. I, I think they're tracking the Stingray on the Gladys, so they haven't exchanged for Miracle 12. Is everybody doing that now, or are people still using Miracle 12s to get their Stingrays in? Yep. Uh, I, I like the Miracle 12 because uh, this is this is more straight. So, what do you think? Do you still use the Miracle 12, or you track on Mike? No, I don't. I don't use the Miracle 12 anymore. I just uh, just deliver over the Mongo. I think it's a very good wire for delivery. You're in you're in a 
a safe, confident space with the knuckle there. Um, sometimes even with the Miracle 12, if you're having difficulty delivering the Stingray, you can lose your wire position and then you don't, you don't know where to go because uh, you don't have the knuckle wire anymore. So I, I, I just routinely use the Mongo. That's a that's a that's a that's an awesome point. I actually use both still. Well, what about campus? What do you use? Uh, Miracle 12 or a choice PX to support polymer jacket, a lot of support, and um, you you cannot do something with the tip. So almost the, sti the tip will stay in sub into my. Is everybody? Uh, I okay, hate to interrupt, Jonas. So I apologize. I just want to show. Here's bad. Yes. Two lines, two dots. Yes. And I I made up just because actually made the wrong direction. No wonder I can't see. So okay. this is, you're looking at the holes on FOSS, either they're going away from you or to you. Now we're going to see the other yeah, view where you only now. see just one balloon. And I want, Bill, show us the one balloon. I'm trying to find <laughs> it, Cal. I'm yeah. telling the same thing. <laughs> Everybody's saying the same thing. Bill, uh, while I I'm doing this, I will point out we're using the Rampart system, so if you notice, none of the three of us at the table are wearing lead which I will say is going to extend my career because it makes my back better. Well, Good bending over like this is going to kill you back. <laughs> no, I know. Well, I'm trying to stay at Kate <laughs> height, which I don't like working with Kate for this reason. <laughs> Bill, can I ask you a question? Uh, you had a knuckle that uh, jumped forward and it didn't become bigger. Uh, what made you think that you were still subintimal and you hadn't re-entered? You didn't obviously take a picture. We actually, we actually did. Cal uh, I, I didn't see. It was, yeah, it's okay. And it wasn't, it wasn't in. Okay. I didn't see the. I didn't see the picture. Take it easy. Well, still, you still Mike, saying do you want me to go lateral? Often very difficult in this uh, segment mm. to get a Bill, an idea. Bill's getting it. excited. I was because I can't get it to lay out. It's annoying. Ah, I'm gonna break my rampart. Okay, uh, I think we're just going to have to go with what we got. Yeah, we'll be okay. I'll go with Steve Carlos. That one yeah. was a little bit better, yeah. So that's, that's a common problem. Um, sometimes you yeah. cannot really find the view that, how about cranial audio? In the Cirque, I found that sometimes lays out the, okay. the Stingray balloon really good. Cranial audio. Yes, sir. Like, like a steep audio. That looks good yeah. yes, sir. your captors right over it. <laughs> That's exactly, not th unfortunately, yeah. not today. Okay, let's go back to that Our LAO throttle steep is about as good as we're going to get. The wind uh, lateral is probably what we need to do, but we're not set up with, to do that. Yeah, with ramparts, the extreme angles are a little bit So if you push the knuckle a little bit more distal, you'll be able to lay it in the cranial audio. At that point, we just star it. Yeah, yeah. which we can do. Yeah. We just you don't have much side branches from there, but you don't want to pass the source of We're going to run out of too. time. Can you see? Oh, there it is. You still have six minutes to go. Okay, make that work. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're gonna make this work, right? Can we get a pilot to 100? Let's just stick a for re-entry. You're gonna stick and swap or stick and drive? We'll see. Uh, we're using an Estado <laughs> 20, Mike. Pick a choice. There's one side. We, we tend to use Estado now as our primary stick wire, and we do a lot more stick and go than the old days. Yeah. So what we, uh, what, uh, Nicola, what do you stick with? Uh, probably a Hornet 14 still. Hornet 14, Dimitri, go Confi answer. Co Confianza Pro 12 was the first choice. Okay, uh, Margaret? Nope. Hornet 14 or Confianza Pro 12. All right, Guy at third, way. next, Dr. Sato. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah, stick with if you use a sting Stingray? Uh, same, maybe. Same, mm. Guy, mm. uh, Mike. Again, depends on the, the anatomy and the distal vessel. If it's heavily calcified, uh, I'm going to use an Estado the vast majority of the time. If it's a large vessel uh, without much calcium, I think a Gaia 3rd next works great for that. For sticking and driving. Oh, okay, they stick and drive in here. Take it further. So another trick that can be useful at this point, if you can get a good alignment of the balloon, is um, take the balloon back out, which is a pain. And then put yeah, like a seal around the epicardial, almost like a marker wire for you to aim at. I've done that a couple of times successfully. Explain that again. So you put a seal wire around the epicardial. So you're not crossing the epicardial with the mic catheter if you're worried about that because of the size. But if you can get a seal around as a marker wire, and it gives you something to aim at if you can't see, you know, from the orientation where your distal target is. So you cross the, epic, the collaterals without just crossing the microcatheter? Yeah, just to give you a marker wire? Just to be, or become a kissing wire? Yeah. Okay. 
So what, 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 what do you stick with, uh, Gerald and campus? The two sticks I did this year f out of my 200 PCIs uh -huh. was with the Stingray wire. Okay, Stingray wire. Warrior 14. Hornet 14. I no, no, Warrior, Warrior, Warrior. Warrior? Warrior. The Warrior, okay. not the Hornet. Okay, not the Hornet. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a good deflection force, right? Yeah. So I actually found Astaro 20 when it calcified. I do a uh, Gaia third when I want to stick and drive. And uh, seems to have a small side branch, calcium. right? Yep. Yeah, it's past the yeah, side branch. I think it was successful, right? It looked like it. Eh? Uh, we're no, in the weight distal, I think it's, so I think that I don't think it was a small side branch. Let's stop for a second. All right. So we only have a couple minutes here, guys, before we have to stop. Yeah. So we we have three right. minutes. We have two minutes. Yeah. So here it looks like if we we probably come in, but pretty distal, so we might as well. So I, I would like to ask ask the panel. Yeah. Yes. Because this is about quality of life, right? So what I'd like to ask the panel is, can people discuss? risk of an epicardial collateral versus risk of star to improve quality of life? So that's a very good question. You, uh, and I'm gonna let the panel answer, starting from Nicola. You, would you star or cross the colla epicardial collaterals? Um, probably a star in this S case. Star, Dimitri? Star, uh, Margaret? So at this point, I would exchange for a Puma jacket. I would see where it went, keep it as a stick and swap. And if that is if it's still suboptimal, I would balloon and probably stop. My answer depends on the epicardial collaterals. Star, I, would I, would actually, I would go epicardial collaterals. Uh, Dr. Sato, yes. star or epicardial? Uh, for this particular patient, the, the, uh, there is a loop. Uh -huh. That one is uh, very dangerous. OK, so Mike? Yeah, I, I would star this, and I think uh, in general, you know, probably more importantly for the audience, uh, you unless you are quite adept at uh, and experienced with epicardial collaterals, uh, you should, uh, in the majority of the time, star in this situation. Okay, and and uh, we're going to ask about how to star. Uh, Gerald, will you star or go epicardial collaterals? Uh, epicardials with the right tools. That okay. is a suo and caravel, okay. nothing else. And I know campus already wants yeah. to go epicardial. That's <laughs> true, that's go. true, because I think it's a straightforward one. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So I want to ask the, 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 the operators to tell us how they're going to star if they want to star. Do they star past? Do they do, a, like, are you going to push until it re-enters, or are you just going to take this and balloon the, the CTO segment? Can you tell us, Kate? Yeah, I mean, we would pull back here and catch the knuckle a little bit more proximally, and then a lot of times we'll just push forward and hopefully we'll re-enter at that secondary branch point, and then we'd come back and wire redirect and try to get that smaller OM branch as well. What if you didn't enter in that? What if the, the, the knuckle kept going? Then we just wire redirect and go into it, or you could do what Margaret suggested, which is basically yeah. spam. Yeah. I mean, yes. the star is basically getting outflow, Spam is not getting outflow, and that's yeah. the difference in those two procedures. And I, I think that for all of us, the real issue gets to if we want to see a wider adoption of CTOs, sitting at a, at a big meeting and telling everybody to go retrograde through an epicardial when we know that 95% of the operators on Earth can't do that, behooves us to either find new technologies that can facilitate integrate procedures better right. because there really has been no real move so, be Bill, so your point is really well taken. If you, this is this is a very high-end epicardial collaterals, and probably unless you are regular practitioner of epicardial and retrograde, uh, you cannot do. So time is up, and we're gonna say goodbye to our uh, colleagues in Washington. They, you guys did a tremendous job, very educational, and thank you so much for the panelists. And uh, and uh, uh, Margaret and I thank everybody who participated in this. Thank you for having us, TCT Thanks, guys. guys. Goodbye. Bye. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.